if my if my house burned down tomorrow, if all my makeup was stolen and I had to repurchase my makeup, what what would I what is my ride or die? What would be the instant thing that I am repurchasing? That's what this video is all about today. What would I repurchase tomorrow if my makeup bag was stolen or if I lost all my makeup in my makeup collection? What would be my starting point? What would be my ride or die makeup? Okay, you guys are gonna find this funny, but I have some things in here that like, I would definitely need to include in my collection because I know my makeup, I know my skin, I know how my skin works and I know that I need some of these things. So we're gonna start with the base of the face. The base of the face. I am at an age, I'm 35 years old, I live in upstate New York, I know that I need a primer. I know that if my makeup does not have any type of primer, really good primer, that the makeup ain't gonna last because I'm just at that age where my skin is changing, it's very transitional, and I need a really good primer. So the first thing in my ride or die makeup that I would repurchase if I were starting my collection over from scratch, the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This is a $10 primer. I know it's a little bit expensive, but this is also a very grippy primer. Every single time that I try a new foundation, this is the primer that I go to because I never have problems with it pilling on my face, disturbing my makeup, breaking me out. Like It does not do anything to my skin or my makeup that makes it a finicky product. It's a very universal product. I'm able to pair it with a lot of things and I need some grip in my makeup because let's face it, I'm getting older, I have fine lines, I have wrinkles and I don't want that stuff like being settled into and this just like smooths my skin, creates a very grippy texture for me and this is literally, I think my fourth purchase of this and I love it. It is a ride or die. I would have to repurchase it again if I lost my makeup collection. So for foundation, I actually have two. And I, I've had like a toss up between these two because I love them so much. And now they're a little bit more easily accessible. I can actually purchase them at a number of places. One of them being Walmart. And Walmart is actually where I live. I live in a very small town and we do have a Walmart. That's like it. So if I want to go to an Ulta Beauty and purchase some things that are only available at Ulta Beauty or at Sephora, like I'm taking a trip into town. I'm driving a half an hour. And this, like if I'm going to be purchasing something, it better be worthwhile while. But honestly, I don't think high-end foundation is that. I do not believe that you need a high-end foundation to get a high-end look. I actually have two ride or die foundations that I absolutely love. One of them is the Makeup Revolution Super Matte 2-in-1. And this is it's just such a beautiful formula, very skin-like. And this is like the most full coverage I have ever seen in a foundation. And it wears all day. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't dry down funny. It doesn't like feel funny on my skin. It doesn't like separate or coagulate or make my skin feel oily at all. It retails for $5. So if I want a really affordable, good, full coverage foundation, that's the one that I'm going for. The, the Makeup Revolution 2-in-1. But I also know that sometimes I can't find that foundation in certain places, even though it's more readily accessible. A lot of, some Walmarts still don't have it. It would be the Maybelline Superstay Activewear Foundation. This is one of my favorite foundations. I actually have another, I have a Foundation Friday on this one as well, but this is actually like a $12 to $14 foundation. So it's a little bit more pricey for a drugstore foundation, but literally every single time I wear this, it applies so smoothly and it just goes on. And whenever I look at my skin, like when I'm applying it, I'm like, I'm even wearing foundation. That's like how beautiful and lightweight and like the only way to really describe it is like silky. It feels silky. Like it just feels like silk gliding across my skin. It is such a beautiful foundation. I know that if something were to happen to my makeup collection tomorrow, this would be like the number one foundation that I would repurchase from or the Super Matte 2 in 1 from Makeup Revolution. This comes in a number of shade ranges. I wear the shade 112 Natural Ivory. Perfect shade match for me. It is so beautiful. It is long lasting. It just is such a beautiful formula. It doesn't settle into my fine lines. It doesn't settle into my wrinkles. It wears down beautifully over time and it's very long lasting and it's made for an active wear situation. So like if you're the type of person who is pretty active, like this will hold up to it because it's that good. I love those foundations. Those are the two that I would definitely repurchase one or the other depending on which one is more readily available to me. 
and how much money I want to spend, let's be honest. But I would definitely purchase those two because they are like my top ones and they are drugstore, but they are really, really good. Honestly, to me, they perform better than high end. We have the primer, we have the foundation, but I also forgot to mention that I would have to repurchase an SPF. And the SPF that I would repurchase would be the Toti Solera Antioxidant Sunscreen Serum. This is only a product that you can find online. It's not sold in store. So I would have to order this online and it is, it retails for a pretty penny. If I remember right, it's like $35, but it has an SPF of 50. It has a little bit of a tint to it. So actually when you wear it, it it's almost like a tinted sunscreen serum-y feel. So you could, in theory, if you are the type of person who likes just a very light coverage and you love sunscreen, this would be like the perfect product for you. But it comes with an SPF of 50. It was actually formulated with mature skin in mind because it was formulated by Sofia Vergara and she is in her 50s. She wanted sunscreen, skincare, like face products. Now this is a great no white cast, like I literally just blended this in. This is a no white cast mineral sunscreen. Dries down powder dry and it even gives you just a little bit of a blurring quality because it has that tint in it. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but honestly, you can't find a sunscreen that performs. Like I haven't been able to find a sunscreen that performs like this and it is worth every single penny, but I would definitely have to repurchase it because this is my favorite sunscreen that doesn't mess with my foundation. It doesn't mess with any of like my foundation products at all. And it provides like the best sun care coverage that I can find. And it is so, so good. Like I also would have to repurchase color correctors. And in particular, it would definitely be the salmon color corrector from e.l.f. and also the green color corrector from e.l.f. Yes, guys, I know I'm getting a little bit bougie talking about color correctors, but when you get to 30, almost 35 years old, you need color correction in your life. Especially, I am a mom of two. My kids are still pretty young. They're almost seven and five. So like, they like to wake up early. They like to wake your mama up early. And <laughs> I need some color correction on those days when I'm having really heavy blue coloring under my eyes. And then I also need this one because I get a lot of hyperpigmentation. I get a lot of red. So every once in a while, I'll just be like randomly red around my nose or even like under my eyes, like on the outer corners here, or even I'll get some like red splotchy patches or I will get acne. And the green one is perfect for that. So these two actually retail for like three or four dollars at Walmart. They're easily accessible. They're really good color correctors because they're not super, super heavy, but they're just there enough that they give me the exact color correction that I need. They were formulated very beautifully, but for somebody who is in her mid thirties, I need color correction and these are it. For a drugstore conceal, I actually have two concealers that I would repurchase depending on if I'm placing a Sephora order or not because one of them is only found at Sephora and that would have to be the Tar 28 Serum Concealer. This is a favorite of mine, but I actually like how lightweight it is. I also have the CoverGirl True Blend or Undercover Concealer. Love this concealer. Super lightweight feeling, but very full coverage. And CoverGirl really has like a great line of product when it comes to their concealers. So I'm just going to share this out a little bit. And I really feel like the True Blend has such like a blurring quality to it as well. And that one is actually a really affordable. I think it's price pointed at like $10 and I could find it at my local Walmart or we would go with the serum concealer. And this one is actually the Tower 28 serum concealer. So I have it on my hand here. This one is a little bit pricey. So it would really depend on if I want a very high-end concealer or if I would want something that was, you know, more drugstore price pointed. Both of them have a very good quality. They're very long lasting. They have a great longevity. It really would depend on the time of year. It would depend on my skin preferences. I have found that the CoverGirl provides a little bit more coverage than the True Blend, but I've also found that the serum concealer is very lightweight. It doesn't settle into any kind of fine lines or wrinkles. So that would definitely be another one that I would be contemplating purchasing. But if it were coming down to the wire, those are the two concealers that I would definitely consider if something happened to my makeup collection. Like, look, look how flawless my hand is. Two concealers are on there. Can you tell? For powder, 
Did you guess it? This is the Sephora Micro Smooth Multitasking Baked Face Powder. This is a $20 powder, but it is the best powder that I have ever used because it's a baked powder, a beautiful baked formula. On the Sephora website, it actually describes it as a foundation. So if I wanted a really good powder foundation, this could be it too. Just put on the sunscreen, put on this. I'm good to go, especially if I have a really good concealer. But the thing I really like about this powder is the fact that it is brightening for me. It is baked, so it is a very smooth formula, and it even says in the description that it's micro smooth. It can act as a setting powder or a foundation, and it retails for $20 at Sephora. Um, This powder is my ride or die. Ever since I found out about this powder, I have not been able to stop using this powder because it is that good. It has like a blurring quality and a blurring effect on your skin, even when you just put it on the under eyes or if you use it on the entire face. But you can use a velour puff, you can use a brush, set your entire face or just use it as like a foundation. And it literally is just, so I'm gonna actually put it over the concealer here, but it's like blurring and beautiful. And it is worth every penny of $20. This is one of the best setting powders that I have found. There's another one, but honestly, that one's my ride or die. That would be the one I'm repurchasing. For bronzer, I actually, I love this bronzer. I discovered it a couple of years ago. It was off a recommendation from Kelly Gooch. This is one of her favorite bronzers. I tried it out and I, I absolutely love it. This is the Silky Matte Bronzer in Sun Kiss, which is the shade 02 from Milani. This is actually a cool toned powder bronzer. It retails for about $12. You can find it at Walmart. And guys, like I said, I live near a Walmart, so most of my makeup will be coming from there unless I'm really making an effort to find other products somewhere. But this is a cool toned bronzer. And the reason why I like this bronzer so much is because I am a cool toned bronzer girly. I do not like a warm toned bronzer because it tends to make my face look kind of wonky sometimes. So cool toned bronzers are more my cup of tea. They are, they're my cup of tea. I am a cool undertone, so cool undertones look good on me, especially when it comes to my base product. Having a base bronzer that is cool toned, it still warms up my face, but honestly, this bronzer also gives me a little bit of contour as well, which if you're looking for like a two-in-one product, this is a bronzer and a contour in one because of the shade that it is. And like I said, it resells for $12, it is available on Ulta, it is available at like your local Walmart in your drugstore where they carry Milani. Very easy, blendable, pigmented formula. And it makes, it gives me a contour while also bronzing my face. And this would be, this is another ride or die. And I love it. It's one of my favorites. For blush. I honestly don't know if I would be, and the reason why I picked this, the reason why I picked this blush, it's the Milani Luminoso blush. It's a peach blush. But the reason why I picked it is because it's very, very not pigmented, but in a good way. It's a peach blush. And this peach blush is honestly just so beautiful for a sun kiss glow on the skin because it is like very luminescent. But if I am not wanting to purchase a highlighter, like if I find that like in my budget, I don't really want to purchase a highlighter and there aren't a lot of drugstore highlighters that like strike my fancy, this would be my go-to blush because it does have luminescence in it that I probably would not need a highlight. Like this is such a beautiful shade. It's Luminoso. There are other shades in this one, but for me, Luminoso is good because it's like a peachy shade. So it does brighten up my cheeks quite a bit and it's enough of a peach kiss, but it also luminizes my cheeks as well. So I wouldn't need a highlighter, especially if I'm spending as much as what I'm going to spend on the eyeshadow palette that I'm picking because the eyeshadow palette is a lot. And we're gonna save that one for the end. And you guys probably know what it is, but we're, we're not gonna spoil it for you. For setting spray, Maybelline Lasting Fix. Again, you guys are probably like, but do you really need a setting spray? Yes, I do. Because I'm 35 years old, I need something that's going to set down my makeup. And this is definitely that product that sets down my makeup very well. And it gives it a very matte finish. And it is also non-offensive when it sprays. It doesn't have a scent to it. It retails for $10. And anytime that I want to freshen up my makeup, this is a great one as well. I've also found that this is a dupe for MAC Fix Plus. And if you like MAC Fix Plus, definitely try this one because this is literally a dupe for it. But it retails for about 8 
to $10, depending on where you purchase it from. It's from Maybelline and it is so good. Mascara. I have a favorite mascara now. Actually, I have two. One of them I don't actually physically have because I don't I don't have it right now. But that one's more affordable than this one. So let's talk about this one first. It's the Falsy Surreal Mascara from Maybelline. There's a lot of Maybelline. Foundation, setting spray, mascara. Maybelline. Maybelline has the has the take on a lot of the things. I really like their quality. But Maybelline Falsies Surreal Mascara. This is a lengthening and volumizing mascara. It literally makes my lashes look so fake. I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually wearing a different mascara, but this was in my Best of Beauty 2023 video. Honestly, I would be purchasing this one hands down $12. Or I would purchase the Essence Lash Princess False Effect Mascara. That's a $5 mascara. My my lashes look so black when I wear it. I was actually watching a video of like a makeup tutorial for wedding makeup the other day. And I used that mascara and I'm like, wow, my lashes are like black. Like black is black is black. And I'm like, I need to get that mascara again. Like after I'm through a couple more of these. Because while this, the Falsy Surreal is black is black, I feel like... The Lash Princess False Effect Mascara literally takes my lashes a step further and they're like jet black false lashes. This one is, this one's pretty good. This one, if I was going to Walmart and I needed a mascara, this would be my number one pick or the, the Essence Lash Princess False Effect Mascara for five bucks. Like both are very good mascaras, but honestly, like they're, they're both very good. But I think the Lash Princess one would be like my ultimate favorite. For lip liner, I would have to go with Essence. Essence is such an affordable brand. I don't have a lot of Essence in this video because they're not really readily accessible. They're only accessible at Ulta, but I would definitely be be taking a, a kindness to their lip liners. Their lip liners are the only ones that I absolutely love that are an affordable price point. I am not, I'm not a lipstick person by any means. I I do love a good neutral lip. I love a good eye like lip liner. And this one honestly does it for me. This is the Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner. It is waterproof. It comes with a sharpener. And the shade that I have is called Unforgettable. And this is a retractable lip liner that is waterproof. Like this is everything that I need as a mom. It's creamy. It's smooth. I can sharpen it if I need to. And it's retractable. So nothing is getting wasted with this, this lip liner. I think max it retails for is like $5. And if I were to find, like I have Maybelline lip liners that are very similar to this, but literally they retail for like $10 or $11, whereas this one's maybe five. So we have the lip liner for, I would do, honestly, I think I would skip the lip stick and just go with a lip oil. And I love the e.l.f. one. I think this one retails for like $8. The shade I have is Rose Quartz and I honestly love the quality of this lip oil. I have found that it doesn't actually pick up any pigment from like a lip liner or a lipstick, which is really good because there's been some other ones that have done that. And I think that's why the longevity of this one has been so much better than the NYX Fat Lip Drip Oil that I had. This one is such a beautiful shade. It is a pink shade. So like, honestly, when it comes to lip oils, like any shade, it's all going to look the same on your lips. Like they don't really translate to the shade that's in the bottle, but I just, I just think the pink is pretty. But I have the Rose Quartz shade. It is a really pretty shade. It's very nourishing on my lips. I can put it over a lipstick. I can put it over a lip liner and it doesn't pick up the lip liner at all on the doe foot, which is really a good quality to me. It's affordable. It's like seven or eight dollars. Honestly, you could just go with a lip liner if you're a lippy person and then just put like a chapstick over it as well and then you would get kind of the same effect as you would with a lip oil but honestly i'm bougie and i i like a lip oil i think the lip oils are beautiful the last thing that i would definitely have to repurchase if i lost all my makeup tomorrow and this one's a bit pricey she pricey she is so pricey but it is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Eyeshadow Palette. Now this eyeshadow palette retails for $60, 15 shades, but this eyeshadow palette, I am telling you guys, it is like, this is my favorite eyeshadow palette. Out of all of the Natasha Denona palettes I own, out of a lot of the other eyeshadow palettes I own, I've had this since it launched 
And this is literally my favorite eyeshadow palette because it's like the perfect neutral eyeshadow palette for somebody who is pasty pale like me. If you are pasty pale and you like neutrals and you like a good quality blendable eyeshadow, this eyeshadow palette is 100% for you. Yes, it's $69, but you get pigmented mattes. You get a range of pigmented mattes. So I'm definitely the type of person that sometimes I'll just throw one of these like grayish brown shades into the crease and call it a day. Just do a, a matte look. Or if I want something a little bit more pink, I'll throw this in the crease and put this on my lid. Or if I want something very sultry, crease, lid. Like this eyeshadow palette is like literally, I feel like Natasha made it for me because even if I just want a one and done shade, which I have done this before, I just take Muse. This is like a rose gold shade and I put it all over my lid. It's the perfect amount of sparkle versus the perfect amount of pigment. And it is just so beautiful on the lid. Yes, it retails for $69, but I have gotten so much use out of this eyeshadow palette. And if I just want to take it traveling, like maybe pull out a couple of the shades, you can actually flip it over and pop them out on the back here and you can put them into a smaller like quad palette if you really want to and just travel with those four shades as well. Again, this retails for $69, but this is my favorite Natasha Denona palette. Like this is my favorite Natasha Denona palette. I can't get enough of it. Honestly, like if I were to recommend like my top nude palette, it would be this one. Or if my house burnt down tomorrow, the, this is the makeup that I would be repurchasing. Some of this is like some of the best makeup products that I have tried. And I have tried a lot of makeup over the years. I started my channel in 2017. And honestly, this is what would start in my makeup bag if I were to start do like if, if something happened in my makeup collection, this is what I would start over again with. Thank you guys so much for watching. Staying tuned to the end of this video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope you guys like this video and I hope I get to see you again. Bye.